Okay, well, welcome everybody to the very, very first episode of Hack at Four. Um, first, a bit of item about what this is about. This is just coding. This is, um, I'm going to be coding on some Crux applications. Uh, we're going to have different guests, different pair uh, of people to program with. Um, and uh, Jeremy here is a regular, so I'll let Jeremy introduce himself, but he's, he's the head of product at, at Juxt. Juxt is a company that is building Crux. Um, I'm the CTO. Uh, let Jeremy, uh, can you give a quick introduction to yourself, Jeremy? Yeah, so, um, so as Malcolm said, I, I, I look after our sort of product strategy and chief uh, in that mix is, is Crux, which uh, we've been working on for a good uh, couple of years now, which uh, has been a fun journey and uh, really is uh, like a mission to rethink how we construct databases and uh, so I've been working all this time with uh, the team to sort of make sure we're building the right database for the right market and uh, you know looking ahead uh, at where the where the future audience and uh, customers will be because of course as a commercial venture we're looking to uh, solidify a, a market um, and uh, and understand how we can commercialize the exciting technology but uh, yeah one of the things I've been doing over the past few um, months is working with Malcolm on some various uh, innovations on top of Crux, um, which I'm sure Malcolm, you want to elaborate more on now. Yeah, so um, we, we are going to be just coding, and, and this is not a demo. This is the, the this is going to be mostly, most days, um, hopefully um, every day, but we, we'll skip a few days. Um, but this will be going down rabbit holes, this will be live coding, and this will not necessarily, not every bit of code will work it will be sometimes it will, will be clogged and uh, things won't you know but this is this is real um, and this is kind of how we code and how we build things so I'm going to start off with um, so Jeremy I've been working on an, uh, a very kind of tweaked version of site now I should just introduce we we're building a database called Crux. Site is really a web server built on the Crux database I think there's you know that's there's no more uh, different way of putting it it has uh, one real kind of design feature, and that is a crux entity, which is a map. It's a, a what do we call it? A property graph, or a crux entity, is something with, with which has properties. Where um, is we, we've in sight said that that is the same as a web resource. So web pages, images, resources. Uh, API routes, all of those things are individual crux entities, and we just expose them to the web. And there's some magic namespace or magic keywords that we standardize on and those uh, we will we'll, we'll show you those later anyway so I'm going to just log into our, our server we're running site on a on a server that is we're, we're building a whole set of applications I guess to kind of serve the Juxt company um, and uh, so there's a whole load of things that we want to build but one of the things that Jeremy and me are building is a card system. It's kind of like a wiki, or maybe Jeremy, you want to sort of explain where do we get this idea? What, what's what's the idea here? Well, I, I think Malcolm and I have both been working uh, in the industry long enough to sort of see the the gap in the market for um, low code tools. I mean, you see a lot of hype in Silicon Valley. You know, lots of investment going into this space at the moment. Um, but yeah, we. we we're interested in, the, in this, interested in this intersection of, uh, sort of users being able to define complex sort of graph informational structures um, without needing you know much help from developers to then sort of mold those structures into usable applications. So um, you know we, we, we're very interested in this ability for users to help themselves and uh, define uh, ways for communicating and organizing their businesses. Uh, which almost bypasses, you know, the need for developers to be on hand, you know, to 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 do day-to-day -day development work just to just to create a user interface. Um, so there's a lot of low-hanging fruit. We think, uh, you know, a lot of applications are, you know, essentially just doing crud work, and uh, you know, th there are reasons why things like um, PHP and Drupal and all these content management systems are still very popular. It's because they they solve attempt to solve this problem um, but uh, no one's yet done it with closure or, or crux and uh, we, we think that those two elements are 
key to our uh, sort of solving this once and for all and, and sort of building a, a stack which um, which allows these expert application users to you know as and when they need extra levels, levels of extension they can they can take peek under the covers and and um, uh, and it hook into the system at the right right layer so you know we're not talking about sort of a a wild small talk environment where everything's sort of in this one monolithic system we're building on top of standards and and using uh well thought through layers of technology to uh, to realize this uh this vision of of yeah sort of allowing the end user to have much more flexibility than they do today where everything is trapped in SaaS applications yeah yeah, so well, anyway, I'm going to show Jeremy uh, what I've been working on now. It occurred to uh, we, we sort of saw a demo uh, not so long ago with Vercel or Next.js, and they were showing how you could edit stuff in Notion and have it published straight away on your your uh, via your CMS or by you know onto your website. So I wanted to. We, we've been working on a kind of card system. This is the very first card, and it's really, really primitive. We don't really, um, but we have the ability to sort of change here. So I can, I can make that uh, introduction. I can say, I can call that my you know, section. I'm going to call it uh, a quick demo. And what we're going to show here is um, how uh, to publish a card. Right? And so. Let's see if we can. I don't think we can actually add a, uh, a paragraph. This is the idea here: is you can add paragraphs here, but you can't, can't actually add one and, and delete that one. So that's got to, we've got to code that. But we can say for the first the first one, we're going to show um, show how to how to publish uh, this card uh, using the site. Okay, so I need to just go onto the servers and. Upgrade site. Um, so I'm. Uh, we're going to stop the server. And here, I'm going to do a git pull. I check the git log. Yep, that was. I was doing some Selma work, and we're going to start the server again. Okay, so while that server is coming up, I'm going to. Oh, uh, going to show Jeremy. I have these. Cards. Uh, well now let's. Um, yeah, I had this new uh, web web page. Actually, I don't think I committed it. Let me just put that. Do that on my laptop quickly. Um, ah yes, here we are. Um, and a web template demo. Now. There we are. So I'm just going to show you this, Jeremy. So we've, I've got a new set of resources that I'm going to deploy to site. So the first one is this web page. And uh, this is a crux entity, and you can see it ends in test.html. It has some methods. So I, I talked about how maps in crux these entities can have special, well-known keywords. Uh, Keywords in Clojure can have namespaces. Oh, by the way, we're writing everything in Clojure. Uh, we'll talk a bit more about that later on in another episode. This is a, uh, a another special that says it's a it's a template. So and this is where the template is exists. It's under a different URL. To show where that is as well, if we look at resources test template, that is a another resource. That's something that I'm, that's an, an asset, some content that I'm going to post up. And I have this site tool. This is a sort of command line thing that I, I can post assets and I can post resources and add users and all kinds of admin things. So I've got a little script here called test deploy test pages, which is going to pop those two things into the site. I'm going to get a token first, um, which uses my password and gives me a 60 minute uh, window to do stuff. Uh, that might change in the future, but you know, site is something that's evolving. And part of these uh, sessions that we're going to have, we're, we're tweaking site, we're, we're improving site, we're building it, we're building apps on site, um, and we might even be diving into fixing things in Crux. Who knows? So now I can run this deploy test pages. Okay, my uh, we've deployed. So let's have a look at this, Jeremy. Test.html. So that should be um, 
index.html. Oh no, I have to log in because it's uh, still private, I think. Here we go. So uh, now that is uh, that's interesting actually. That that uh, didn't work, but I think I know why it didn't work because it was um, deployed. Don't know if, if you can see. I've uh, let's have a look at these resources. So let's have another look under so we've got this web page which is the template model here we are yeah the, we've got a card uh, this card has a different address um, so this is the the card's address so I'm gonna copy this is the thing to spot Jeremy this is the, the template model so I'm going to say that this card sitting here is going to be the template model and that and the template is going to be uh, I think I put it under templates no um, uh, under resources test template so this is the template uh, so we should see or we see author but we don't see any of the template model, which is probably because we've got the, the URL wrong. Okay, so now I have to redeploy that. Okay, that's redeployed. We should see our content. Yay. So the idea here, this is and this is the demo, and I guess we've got to think of more things to do. I can say uh, this is a show to, well, this is done now, this this action. So I can I can make that an action and I can say, yeah, you're done. Um, it doesn't change the I can say losing size. That would be a, a new thing that we have to do. Show checkboxes in published HTML. So that would be a, another action. So let's refresh this. Yeah, wow, that's uh, that's actually worked. How do you do a checkbox in in HTML, I guess there's, a, there's an emoji, is there? Check. Well, I mean, just like the ones you got on the right, you mean? Yeah. So, well, anyway, I mean, we can, yeah, we, we, we can copy and paste that. Uh, oh, you mean without all the, because um, you got tailwind stuff? Yeah. Oh, well, I guess we could make the checkboxes a field in the in the HTML and give. You know, and just tick and tick it. Yeah, that's that's what I was imagining. I mean, um, I, I quite like using like uh, ticks and um, yeah, there are some like, nice ASCII characters. Yeah, do you want to look one up? And I'll uh, we'll, yeah. And while you're doing that, uh, I think what we'll do is just have a look at the code that renders this. Um, now this is in something I put in site, and the idea of site is com completely agnostic to your domain and applications. Applications are things that run outside of site. Uh, that I've cheated and I've kind of put some logic into site too. Uh, well, let's have a look at this in the Crux database. Uh, here's another tool that we use from time to time, which is our server REPL. So we can REPL into Crux, or site rather, and we can um, copy and paste uh, using this e uh, REPL function, which says give me the entity, and it will give us that entity. So this thing on the left, of course, is the database, I, go, I guess, record that corresponds to this thing on the right. Uh, so if we change here, so if I say a quick demo at, and then we look at that, you can see that the title down here will have changed to a quick demo at. And the reason that happens is because as soon as you make a change to this uh, data in this UI, after a second of not typing, it then just refreshes. You see that you might see a green flash. The green flash is uh, when a text field has not been saved to the database, and then it gets saved. There we go. That's the green flash, and we're back. A quick demo. So that's how it works. So I think the, the what we need to do is have a look at these cards here. So this one would be show checkbox. So how we've got that one. 
and you can see this has some content and this is what we're rendering. Now this this entity has some content but it also has a status of to do. Now if things have a status they should have a box. So let's do that. So uh, the code that renders this is in sight and it's in it's just Dive into this card now. What does that look this template rather? Oh, no, I put this. Um, let's have a look what's going on. This is Selma, which is a bit like moustache. We are referencing things that are actually inside our our resource. So let's take a look at just copy and paste this. That's what this looks like. So we can use Selma to access this pool. Oh, yeah. Um, so let's uh, see down here, Jeremy. I put a a special tag. Oh, I haven't got the latest version. Yeah, so you can see I'm saying that this is the uh, okay, have a look at the text template again. So what happens is it says for segment, the, the bit of the, this is a segment here, for every segment in the content, um, now B is the block that we're, we're rendering, and this comes from the parent. Uh, content so anyway this is a two layer uh, card um, and then we call this render segment this is this I think called Selma filter so this means that this code is going to get called and I say if it's a vector then look at so in this case I want to say first of all let's build this up as a string uh, Let's start with an empty string, and we can say um, no. Oh, yes. um, so when the uh, hmm. So, so what you're thinking here is to prepend something to the content. So you've already got something rendering the content, but you're yeah. now you want you want to stick something in front of it. Yeah, I guess yeah, there has to be some sort of if uh, if something is true, if the in this case if the uh, the B. So this B here, I'm calling DREF on the block. So it's kind of let's just explain what's going on here. We have um, a block, which is our first card, which is, has this content has a bunch of URLs. And this is a this is a technique of encoding the structure of the document, how the paragraphs and sections and things relate in the graph database. And where a parent want, where a parent has some structure, like it could be a list of paragraphs, we actually put a list of links to those paragraphs, but you don't see the links. The links kind of, the content at the end of those links gets brought in. And that's that's a, um, a the word to describe that is called transclusion, which was an old thing in the Xanadu platform, Ted Nelson back in the day. So the, this idea of transclusion, so you, you have a hyperlink, but instead of just giving you a, what's called a jump link, which is what the web has, and um, this is a link that brings in content. So we've brought the content in, but then now we need to say, well, this is an, a task as opposed to a paragraph. And so it should have, if it's a task, it will have an action. Um, so that's what we want to, to look for. 
Um, okay. Um, so this is what B represents here. B represents the uh, the Second. block. Yeah, the 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 car. Well, yeah. B represents. Oh, the, the container. Yeah, right. the container. The paragraph. Case, yeah, right. which has the status. So yeah. juxt card alpha status. So we, we say if juxt card I'll use this dot status is equal to I think we can say this equal to to do. I guess it yeah, I guess it's to do. Then we'll well I guess we'll just put it for for now we can just we can just bring it in as a status like that. Let's see what happens there. So yeah. I have to uh, deploy that I'll, uh, because we made a change to the template there just there. So I have to. Now you can see the status says status done, status to do is to do. And so I think in Selma you can you can say if the status is to do, then put a, a Unicode thing. Uh, I just have to figure out, I think I've got, no, I have got Selma. Let's just jump to Selma. Uh, yeah, we have it in my, my history. So there's this equal. Here we are. Yeah, it's this kind of thing that we want. Uh, we've got else if as well, I think. Um, uh, there's an e there. Okay, cool. Uh, if. Yeah, I think this is what we what we want really. This kind of thing. So let's copy that. So into our template, if um, if status equal to do. I did paste some Unicode characters in the Twitch chat. Oh, uh, cool. Audience participation. Yeah, this is going to be our, I don't know how to, is that, um, a UTFA, so they should just paste in. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how to get to the chat from here. Oh, right. Okay. Uh, yeah, let me, let me, I'll stick them on them. Um, uh, I'll put them through Slack. That's pretty yeah. Nice. I can... <laughs> Okay, cool. Oh, they just rendered. Uh, okay. Oh, right. Yeah, can you copy that back? Hopefully, I don't know. No, not very easy. No, you can't. <laughs> That's useless. Oh, I, I know. I'll, 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 co I'll quote them in uh, code or something. Um, we ought to get one of those environments where you can... Yeah, you, uh, how are we going to... Do you want to tell me what the, num what the hex is for them? Uh, well, is that is that how you would put them in source? Yeah, well? I think so. I think I can do this. Okay, you... Right. I, I've just pasted them as, as code, but uh, oh. yeah, maybe it's a bad practice to have. That didn't work either. Didn't oh, it? I see what you mean. Yeah, uh, I can get the. Uh, all right, uh, I think I'm going to have to Google banana. I don't know if it's a good practice to have the UTF-8 directly in the source or not. I think it, it will be fine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do you think it's... No, they are called the ballot boxes. Oh, a ballot box. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, which one do you do you have? This one. Yeah, just the, the one with the tick and one without the tick. I mean, I I, I find it um, 
Like, I, I quite like an exclamation mark whenever I'm making like handwritten notes. I always use an exclamation mark, or actually, if I'm just tapping away to do is in an Emacs buffer, I just an exclamation mark needs, means it needs doing. Uh, right. A tick means it's done, but I don't mind what visual style you like. Oh yeah, a tick. A tick is fine. A tick fine. And what's the empty box then? Uh, yeah, so one with check, one without check. Yeah, I just don't know why it, this isn't very good. Um, what's the one without the check? Um, uh, all right, we'll just go. Just the ballot box, aren't they? Uh, two six one zero. Two six one zero. Okay, let's do that one. Remarkable that that was the hard thing to do. All right, anyway, yeah. so. If it's to do, then uh, we'll do that. Else, um, I think it was Elif, wasn't it? And then uh, else that one. Otherwise, we won't do anything. So else if. Uh, I don't know if we need to. I guess you want to put the status inside of those then. Otherwise, status will be rendered regardless, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, all right. I was just thinking of doing that. Um, okay, yeah, you don't need status. Don't need state, right, so just see what happens there. Um, yeah, okay, good. deploy that. Let's get that deploy and lift you that up. Um, okay, we'll get rid of some screen. Um, Okay, I'm going to put that over. Oh no. Right, here we are. There it is. Okay. Um, oh, that sort of worked, but weirdly. Hmm. What's going on there? That's a bit weird. Is it because it's not not part of the compact or what? No, I, I yeah, possibly. Um, I'll just put down and just see if we can get, just get that get yeah. that bit working. It's got the wrong one, hasn't it? It's kind of like whoa, why has it done that? It's saying to do for each of them. Oh, no, that's right. Right, because it's inside the segment. You want to do it outside the segment? So probably probably before the segment. Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Right, yeah. So just under that P. And yeah. Under that P. Oh, I see, put this. Oh, oh, this here, right. It's going to go before the P. Yeah. Hey, James. Hi, James. Oh, hi, James. Hello, you alright? Yeah, yeah, we're good. How are you? Yeah, good. I'm oh, good. I think I've got this race condition. Oh, oh. nice. Of course, yeah. we, are, uh, we are live on Twitch right now, so... Ah. I don't think anyone's watching, um, but it is being recorded. Nobody's watching. <laughs> being recorded. But no. So, well, do you want to... Uh, do you want to explain the race condition? Yeah, I can talk about it. Cool. If you don't mind me jumping on and uh, sharing my screen. No, you should be able to do it. I don't know if I can... Yeah, um, try it. Okay. We'll, we'll figure out how to stream it. I've gone for better text readability on the stream quality, which I guess is pretty much. Right, okay, so you... I'm quite messing up.
Yeah, Discord doesn't tell you you're streaming to Twitch unless you're streaming your own screen, Malcolm. I guess have you? Mm, no, I can. No, I can sort of do it. Um, I'm going to get your stream. Uh, there's your stream. I just got to try and figure out how to make it full screen. Um, but I'll figure it out. Um, yeah, it's annoying on the Twitch. I can't seem to get things properly full screen. I still have the video thing in the corner, so leaving impressions really thing. Right, I'm gonna do it like yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do it, James. We'll we'll get it working. Hang on. Um, window capture. Discord. Okay, should have it now. Yeah, just while Malcolm was saying that, Jeremy, you know, I know we spoke the other week about race conditions in the um, in the throttling. Yes. And I talked about how you have to be so careful with where you read state uh, when you read state. Yes, yes, yes. This is one of those. One of those, right? <laughs> so it does it does happen. And it, is it completely solved now? Like, or are you still trying to verify that? Really I'm I'm reasonably sure. Um, I'm, I'm as sure as you ever can be with these race condition things, because yeah. um, it was it was reproing about ninety ninety five percent of the time without this fix. Okay. Um, and then with this fix, I've not been able to repro it since. Brilliant. So I mean, there, there's obviously still the possibility that all you've done is either just slightly change the order of things and slowed things down in the right place. Um, but I'm I'm reasonably confident. Good to hear. Are we live, Malcolm? Yeah, I'm still like, I think I've got changed the screen. Oh, um, ah, cool. oh, yeah, on the Twitch, yeah. Yeah, I see it. Right, so just a, a bit of background. We had a um, had a report from a member of the Crux community. Uh, he was um, he was using transaction functions to keep aggregations of documents with a certain type. So as the, as the document was going through, he was updating a, a, a counter document for how many documents he'd seen of that type. Um, and what was happening was if he awaited the transaction every time, um, he was getting the correct counts at the end. Um, whereas if he was allowing the transactions to um, uh, to index straight through, as you should as you should be able to in Crux, and in fact as we recommend, um, he was on occasion getting ag aggregates that didn't quite line up with how many documents he he knew he'd ingested. Um, so that was uh, that was the issue. Um, so we're going through. He's, he's given us a great repro for it. Um, so th thank you for that. Um, we've I've narrowed it down to this part of fetch docs in here. Um, and what's happening, so the Kafka doc store, um, the Kafka doc store needs to uh, consume its own doc topic and it consumes it down into a local document store um, on, on each Crux node. Um, so it's, it's not quite in the same league as our other doc stores really. Um, it's, it's, it's not it's not ideal that it has to do that, but for historical reasons, we obviously keep and maintain the um, the, the Kafka Doc Store. The, um, the the race condition here is that that's naturally asynchronous, and so we've got a whole load of guards in place to um, to figure out uh, to, to to make sure that we don't run into any of these asynchronous issues. Um, but ev evidently, not not quite enough. This is the before code, um, so th this is how it was before in Fetch Docs. Um, and what we do here is when when we do um, when we are requested to fetch docs from the Kafka doc store. We go and look at the we go and grab hold of the end offsets um, of the topic before we um, it's not it's not quite before um, but essentially it's before we um, before we fetch any of the documents. Um, and we then loop and we then um, waiting to see when these documents actually get come through when that when they get consumed. Um, the reason we keep these end offsets is then so that if we um, if we if we consume to this point, we know the document is never coming. Um, on on the assumption that the user has submitted the document to Kafka um, before they're they're asking to consume it, and that, that's a, that's a, re a reasonable assumption in practice. So we're running around this loop, um, and what we do we we check to see whether the the um, docs are in the local doc store. If we've got enough docs, then that's easy peasy. We just return those docs. Um, if not, then we check the end offsets. We check the current offsets against the end offsets that we got at the um, at the start of all of this. And if we got to that point, then we also return the docs um, that that we have currently. I say again on the assumption that if we don't have them now, we're never going to spot the issue. Um. 
Malcolm, Jeremy? Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking, is it because you're dereffing end offsets at, uh, deep within the function? So you, you, you're doing a bunch of other stuff and then and then looking. Um, you're right in that that's a double read. Um, it's not that though, and the reason it's uh, the reason it's not that is because that's overly pessimistic. Um, so if I if I were to take the delay out, um, I would end up with lower end offsets. Um, whereas by keeping the delay in, the end offsets here will be later than they would have been. So if any if anything there, it would err on the side of um, waiting for too long. So it's it's not quite that. But that, that is a good shot. Hmm. Okay. The answer is the gap between this fetch docs and this read doc offsets here. And so what, what was happening um, was we were um, fetching the documents here, um, but we weren't checking to see where the um, offsets were until after we'd fetched the documents. And what was happening in between these two calls here, we'd consumed the document into the local doc store and bumped the offsets, but we hadn't gone round again to check whether the, um, uh, the documents were yet present. So the, the gap is in between these two calls. So one here to fetch docs, um, and two, I've lost that, where's that gone? And two here to read doc offsets. And in between those two calls, the doc offsets change. Right. Because we've consumed a, a few more docs. So the fix is here, um, in that we read doc offsets first, um, before we fetch the documents. And then when we do the check for the doc offsets to see whether they're recent enough, we check from the offsets before we fetch the docs. And the impact of that is that we then go around the loop once more. Um, uh, and, and then we, we get, we're guaranteed if we see if we see that an offset has been um, if we see that an offset has been consumed, then we know the document is in the local document store. So a fun one. Yeah, well, I'm quite glad we've recorded this, James, because if anyone else has, uh, we, we hit this bug again, we'll have your uh, commentary. Yeah. Oh. Good. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Good. That's great. That, thanks very much, okay. James. Um, yeah. yeah. It was a... Um, it was a good little. I always enjoy sort of tracking down risk. Well, I enjoy them after the event anyway. Um, so while you're actually searching for them, they can be very frustrating. Yeah. But, but after the event, it's good. It's very satisfying. How long did it take you? So that's taken me the best part of the day, I would say. Find that one and confirm it. Oh, the te the test has just come through green as well. So I'll there. Uh, I mark the PR ready for review. And the the impact to users. Before now, uh, it really only impacts people if they're ingesting at a very high rate, such as when they're bootstrapping an environment or like doing a bulk ingestion. Um, yeah, even then, um, it would have had to have been you'd have had to have been quite unlucky to hit that one right. because the um, the the time in between the check in fetch docs is much smaller than the time it takes to actually ingest the docs. Okay, so that's it's, it's a lot smaller. Well. So they have to be quite small docs, and you and they have to tick over right in that gap. Yeah. So it, it yeah. I mean, we've we've got a fair few tests for this kind of thing, um, anyway. Mm. So I'd be reassured from that. But. Cool. Good to know. Thanks. Cool. Uh, sorry for jumping in. No problem. Um, and it, it's you know good to hear. You. Good 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 to see you, James. I'll give you. Better notice next time that we're we're streaming on this. Uh, <laughs> I should mark, ah, nice. mark it as you know, dump in here, but make sure you uh, um, say hello to you know visitors from the future. So yes, okay. yeah. Uh, we're well back to this this bug, Jeremy. We're we're struggling here. I'm not quite sure. It may be that our knowledge of Selma isn't what it should be, but it seems to have done the given. So let's just remind ourselves what this card is meant to look like. Um, so I'm going to uh, here we are. So it has uh, it has four actions and two paragraphs, and the paragraphs 
have been, and these actions, some of them have been done, and one of them has been done, so one should be done and the other's to do. What we're seeing here is that it thinks that the paragraphs are actions, and the actions are not actions, which is rather strange. I wonder if we need to put a double equals there. Right. <laughs> Possibly. That was a very strange. No, that's yeah. that error often means that it's a, a Selma error. And we could we could go a little bit deeper to find that error. So this might be a an opportunity to have a look at the um, the web resource that pertains to that request and look at this. Um, there are Selma errors down here. I've seen them here. I failed to render template and often oh there's a bit of a stuck trick. Um often you can see um not really telling us very much here, only that it failed to render the template. But is that um message that is that uh clipped? Truncated? Yeah, it's it's um I think it is trun truncated. Um, just saying that it failed. To, I mean, I, yeah, I don't know what it could be in this stack trace. Um, this is still this error browser is a bit primitive still. So, oh yeah, here we know we've got a message here, unrecognized operator in if. So that yeah. it's not that. So, well, what we might do here is we. Print out the status just to see whether it's our fault or a curious bug that one. Oh, I've got to take the, the double equals out. We're not seeing anything. Um, okay. Let's get that. So this is correct in that the I'll put a, a div around that with a bit, bit of a border, I think. So we see a script one. So that was done. So the statuses are coming out as we'd expect them. But it's bizarre that we are our if logic just isn't making sense at all. It's Where was the example of the if that you had up a minute ago? Do you still have the buffer? The, oh, from the from the documentation, yeah. Yeah. If condition and if. So. It's not like the uh, HTML characters, you know, those ETF things that they can oh, be messing up. Yeah, you know, um, just, just in case something, someone doesn't pass it properly. Yeah. Um, where are we? Um, yeah. 
it's saying if the status is to do. It's almost as if we are, our logic here is completely wrong. I mean, maybe mm -hmm. else if the status is equal to done. I can't actually remember what the, the source card looks like. Um, yeah. I which one it's, uh, it's, here, it's here, actually, here. It's, it's here. Um, so that's just one paragraph, but there's there's multiple paragraphs, right? Yeah. So so of 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 the paragraphs in this card, which ones are actually to do? Yeah, the, the this is what the card looks like. We have a paragraph. Okay, so the first one's definitely not a to do. The yeah, first one should be. Should first one should have. Yeah. It should have status and then nil, right? It should say yeah. status. Yeah, that's right, and and they, and it does. It does do. I thought the first one said status to do. Yeah, it does. It does. I'll, I'll try and show both of those, sort of in a. Yeah, the first one says so it is to do. So that implies our equality is not correct. I mean, you're escaping. You're yeah. escaping. Should I not escape it? Maybe that will. Go. I don't know how that works. Yeah. You're not in a string, so I don't see why you'd need to escape it. Yeah, right. So that's worked. That's 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 right. That's okay. Um, so we don't need the we don't need the else. It was just a very very strange maybe Selma. Uh, I don't mm. know if anyone Selma is a bit weird. Because now we've got. Uh, okay. So now we can put our Unicode back. But we don't have a. But I, I guess what I can do is put in the the style sheet that we usually use for uh, Juxt Home. So let me just pick that up. Pick that one up. Which will be this one here. Um, so let's put that style in the. Let's make this a, 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 a sort of a proper. Um, a little bit nicer. So we'll put this. Uh, Okay. So at least we've got the style sheet. We'll put a body tag here. And do some new indentation. Um, okay. And now let's go back and get our Unicode. Let, I'll try and copy and paste something from the from Unicode ballot. Is there not something I can just copy and paste it? I mean, copy, right. Uh, so that's the to do. And then and then we've got the uh, Ballot box check. So uh, eleven two six eleven. So it's just the next two six eleven. Oh, okay, right, the next one. Okay. Just uh, increment the URL. Yeah. Yeah, nice one. Right. Copy. How ugly. Well, anyway. So that will can go into that one. Okay. And now we will re redeploy the page and back here. Uh, yay! Right, I'm just gonna get rid of our status now. Get rid of that div. Well, that was a, a long way around, um, and that's there we are. But it's looking more like a, a web page now. Mm. I can't interact with it, which is what we want. Um, 
if I go then and interact with this one and say, okay, we've well we've shown checkboxes in Publish it. That's now done. Now I refresh the page. Okay, that's looking. So, so, so you do want this published thing to be interactive? No, so, no, maybe. I don't think so. Because this is maybe your published report or something. Mm. Like but you do want to be able to embed this view. Oh no, uh, did, yeah, did, were you intending to embed this view in the card thing, or is this, or this is only a sort of read only? Yeah, this this was only just just could could you use Selma to publish some, you know, use the card as a template model, mm. because Side already has this primitive ability to do server side rendering, and it might be that, you know, what we're trying to show here is that it's just all data in the database, and the the rather than data being siloed into different applications it's it, it can flow between something as you know something even because that is just data in the database you can render it um, okay so we can add more things to this and um, add more text and you know make that an action and then uh, this still works so it's a it's a good way. I mean, this could be a blog article, and then we'd have published it, and we can give it a classification or share it with other people. And so it's a it's sort of become a blogging system of sorts. Um, I guess we could put the title here, couldn't we? Hello. Now it's uh, got tailwind. I, I guess we, you know, none of this is going to be relevant, but you know, we can make it all look pretty nice another time. So let me commit that. Uh, that's just going into um, card. You know, uh, this is um, show checkboxes. I have about eight, eight, eight minutes, and then I was going to speak to Dan. Okay. Cool. Well, we might as well close it there. I think that was that was useful. And uh, let's maybe think about tomorrow what to do uh, on the next episode. But yeah, I think we saw a lot there. Different um, things that we're working on. We'll see some site. Uh, seen some admin tool deployment using the command line tool. Looking at how to dive into errors. Uh, we haven't really talked much about what site does. Uh, only that it's a web server on a graph by temporal database um, so thanks for watching i think we'll, we'll stop now and see you tomorrow same time at hack at four okay cheers good evening